Hi everyone. So the first part of the book that gave me a lot of trouble was the difference between the geometric and the arithmetic average. Um, once you learn it though, it's actually really mind blowing. The geometric average is what you use when you want to look at the rate of growth of something that compounds through time. Um, the arithmetic average is what we are all taught in school and it is what you use when you have when you want trying to find the average of something and each term in the argument doesn't change another term um, so if you want to find the average height of a basketball player for this video let's go first through the arithmetic average for the rate of growth of a tesla stock and these are just made up numbers so uh, they're not actually reflective of reality um, so for the the arithmetic average, the way you would calculate that is, you know, 10% plus 36% plus 30% plus 50%. So let's see. And since they're percentages, I will write them as decimals. 1.01, .01, oops, 1.1. .1, so that's a 10% rate of growth plus 1.3636. plus 1.3093 plus 1 1.5031 and now there are one two three four terms so you divide this number by four that's how you calculate the arithmetic average, right? So when you actually type that into a calculator, the number that you get is 1.319 1 1 or a growth rate average growth rate of 31.9% um, per year. So let's see how accurate that is. What this suggests is that if you take 500 and you multiply it by 1.319 four times for 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020, you should end up with 1476. So let's see that. 1.319 times, oh, wrong order. 500 times 1.319 times 1.319 four times I should write this up times 1.319 times 1.319 what do you get let's see I'm going to type it into my calculator you get 1513.38 so when you use the arithmetic average, you get this number. And of course, there's a big difference between 1,513 and 1,476. So the difference specifically is $37.38. This first blew my mind when I read this because I realized that I had been calculating my student loans incorrectly, um, as well as my investments incorrectly. What this does, is that it's inaccurate. It I think it also overestimates um, the actual growth rate. So that's not good because if you are like me, if you're choosing to invest more than pay your student loans back because your student loan interest rate is lower than your investment rate, the, the rate of return on your investments, um, then you need to double check uh, whether you're calculating things correctly, because if your investments take a nosedive, then your your rate of growth will not be the same. You will be overestimating um, how much you will have returned back to you from your investments. So that's the arithmetic average. It blew my mind when I first learned it, and now I have to go back and redo a whole bunch of calculations for my personal finances because of it. And that's why I love this book so much. 
I haven't even finished it, and it's imparting, imparting so much interesting stuff. So the geometric average is something that you should be using to calculate the rate of growth um, for something where the, the next value depends on the past value. Right, if you're just looking at the average rate, or if you're just looking at the average height of a bunch of basketball players, one basketball player's height does not affect the other one, um, another another player. Uh, so you you can use the arithmetic average, but if you're looking at something where, like a, like the growth rate of a stock, then you do need to look at the geometric average because the rate uh, the the average rate changes depending on what the past value is. So the way that you calculate the geometric average is instead of adding the terms like you do in the arithmetic average, you actually multiply them and then you raise it to the power of, of the number of terms you had or, or you root it by the number of terms you have. So in this case, we have uh, 1.01, whoops, 1.1 times 1.3636 times 1.3093 times 1.5031. Uh, so then you multiply those things, and let me just type this into my calculator. 1.366. Type that into your calculator. Um, and then from here, since there are four terms, instead of dividing by four, like we did in the arithmetic average, you, you root it by the number four. Okay, another way of writing this is, um, and, and this number inside the bracket is 2.951934, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just do uh, 2.95 for the purposes of this. Um, you can also just do 1 to the power of 4. These two things mean the same thing. Um, they both are the same function. So when you do uh, raise it to the power of 1 over 4, or 25%, you get um, 1.3107, or rather 1.311. So what this means then is that your average rate of growth is going to be 31.1% um, every year according to the geometric average. Now, let's test it out exactly how we tested out the arithmetic average. What we do is we take 500 and we multiply it by 1.311, which is to say 31%, and we multiply it by 1, 2, 3, 4, four terms because there are four years. Now, I wrote 1.319 last time. You can also just square root it, right? Uh, that's what... I can write all of this by just going 1.319 to the power of 4 because a number multiplied by itself four times is the same as a number um, being raised to the power of 4. So I'm going to do the same thing here, the exact same thing. So what happens to our original value of 500 when we assume that the growth rate year after year is 1.311? Let's see. Times 500. We get a... Oops. We get a final value of 1,475 and 97 cents. So... That's ridiculously close to our actual value uh, in 2020 of the Tesla stock. It's only off by three cents. Um, compare that with the $37 that uh, the arithmetic average told us the final value would be. Um, so this is why the geometric average is, is something that you should be using when you are calculating the average value of something that changes through time um, rather than the arithmetic average. So 
thank you so much to Mark Spitznagel for explaining this to us. Hope this makes uh, things a bit uh, clearer as we go through the book. Uh, he actually ends up using it quite heavily.